Today, we're going to be learning how to make the bat hand sanitizer case from Designs by Little B. First, I'm going to make the Snapchat version, then I'm going to make the eyelet version. And a little spoiler alert to the construction of these projects is this is the exact same fashion that you will stitch any hand sanitizer case from Designs by Little B. The only difference in the different kind of cases is what design may be on the front. Uh, you could add a monogram, it could come with an applique or a happy face or an animal face or any other design on the front of the case, but the construction of the fobs is the same. So without further ado, let's go to our machine and get stitching. Your first step is going to be to hoop your stabilizer. In my opinion, tear away or cut away does not matter and run the placement for your key fob. I didn't say it in before I started, but you can probably tell by the placement step that this is the snap tab version. I will stitch the eyelet when I get done with this one. So you want to use your placement as a placement <laughs> for your vinyl and pin it down. You can also use adhesive spray would be okay for this step if you like that. I am using blackboard fabric from Joanne. Now you're going to stitch all of the detail steps for the bat. You can check a step list for that information. You can look at your machine and what it's showing you for each step. It is like, I think it's uh, the belly and ear and wing details, then the nose, then the eyes, and then the little fangs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now that all of my detail steps are run, I also ran the circle little placement stitch for your snap uh, when you get ready to install the snap. Now I'm going to remove my hoop. I'm actually, I call it hoop all the time. I'm actually using an easy frame. That's by Durkee. And here is the front of your project so far. You're going to flip your hoop over. See the back? You're going to take your backing piece of vinyl. I'm using chalkboard. Uh, blackboard vinyl from Joanne again because I like that it's thin and flexible but also sturdy. Um, it's thin and it doesn't add to the bulk of the design for your machine to go through. So I'm going to take this vinyl that I cut for the back and I'm going to place it to cover everything so far. I'm going to pin it from the front to make sure I don't have any sharp pointies um, near my machine bed. If you're comfortable using adhesive spray, you can use that for this step because it is just making a sandwich. Make sure that your the wrong side of your vinyl or blackboard fabric or whatever you're using is against the stabilizer. Then you're going to return the hoop to your machine and you're going to stitch the next step, which will seal this uh, sandwich together. Notice to avoid that nest in the back of my machine, I grab my thread, run one stitch, pull the bobbin thread up, and then pull it out And before I continue. That's just a little trick to avoid the nesting on the back of my project. Now that that little sandwich is shut, you will see that your design looks almost finished. Here's the front, and here is the back. The next step is to place your pocket so that you have a place to put your hand sanitizer case, or your hand sanitizer. So what you're going to do with this next step is to stitch the pocket placement lines. One thing you need to know about this step is that it doesn't matter what color you stitch them in and it doesn't matter if it's ugly on the back because this is this uh, little stitch will be cut out of your design. So I'm doing mine in white so that you can see them clearly and I don't worry about any nesting or ugly knots on the back. Okay, so here is, I did mine in white. So there's your pocket placement lines on the front 
and on the back, see how they look kind of crazy and crappy? It doesn't matter because you're going to cut that out. So remove your hoop, just like I just did, and you're going to take your piece of fabric that you're going to use for the pocket. I'm using um, Stand Consistent, and I'm using Blackboard Fabric from Joanne. You may notice when you're watching some of my tutorials that I use pieces of fabric or vinyl that have kind of a wonky edge to them sometimes. That is not on purpose. Usually it's just because I love using scraps, and frankly, a piece of fabric doesn't have to be perfect to be useful. So. When I find a, a piece of vinyl like this in my collection, I'm like, hey, that would be a perfect pocket piece for something. So anyway, so I'm going to take my pocket fabric. You will note in the instructions that you need to install a snap at the top center of your pocket. For the bat design, that looks a little backwards, doesn't it? It's actually at the top center of the longer edge. So I take it, and I want to line up my pocket fabric with those placement lines, making sure that the snap is in the center of the design. Now to affix this, obviously you don't want to use adhesive spray. If you're an adhesive spray user, if you use adhesive spray, you're not gonna be able to open your pocket. So don't do that. You can use pins. I find pins a little difficult because when I am manipulating the fabric to put the to insert the pins, I tend to move the pocket and then my snap is out of placement. So I use these awesome things called Wonder Clips. One of the awesome things about using easy frames or if you have fast frames using those is that you can clip. If you have overhang like this where your vinyl pocket meets the hoop or frame, you can clip it instead of using pins. You can also use tape. That's a great thing to use that isn't permanent but will hold it in place and to me is not as difficult as manipulating using pins. You'll notice just as an aside for my in the hoop projects, I use binder clips for my easy frames. I do not use those on clothing because they do have a little sharp-ish edge to them and I found out the hard way that you can kind of poke holes and rub your, your clothing or your cotton items with those binder clips. So I only use those when I'm just using them to affix stabilizer to a hoop. I just turned my fan on because I'm hot, hot, hot. So I hope it doesn't make too much background noise. Next, you run your final step. This is going to be, whoa, try that again. This one is going to be the final step to affix your pocket onto your project. I'm gonna use my same old trick. If you didn't notice what I did earlier, here's what I did to avoid the nesting in the back. I pull my top thread out like this. You don't have to do it this long. Then I run one stitch and stop, pull the bobbin thread up and out, okay? That is a great way to avoid nesting on the back. Now our project is finished and this is what it looks like from the front and from the back. See how your pocket is affixed? Right there. So now you can remove all your pins, tape, clips, whatever you used, and take your project over for the trimming and snap installation. Installing your other snap is super easy. You just locate the snap placement circle if you used it, poke a hole in the middle of it with your awl, that's A-W-L, or snap pokey thingy as we call it. You want to grab your cap, that's the shiny piece, put it on there, flip it over. I used um, the male piece, if you will, the, um, I believe it's called the stud piece right there. Then I'm going to use the socket or female piece. Put that, I use a tabletop press that I got at camsnaps.com. That's K-A-M-S-N-A-P-S.com. Then you place the cap into the little bowl looking thing where it fits and you smash the lever down to smash the snap together. I can't believe I'm actually about to do that with one hand. <laughs> and it worked, oh my goodness. Okay, so now you can see, you can do this after you cut. I actually usually install it after I cut, but I guess I was just so excited about it that I wanted to do it now. So now you'll see that when I trim it, those pieces are going to snap together. Once you've cut around your bat, you can open it up and place a hand sanitizer in there and then snap it closed. You can see right here why we recommend using a backing with a snap 
style hand sanitizer case because you do see the back right here. So you don't have to, it's certainly functional if I didn't use that piece of blackboard fabric on the back, but just for aesthetic reasons, we usually recommend using a backing piece. That is also the reason why I use my blackboard fabric from Joanne, because it is sturdy and it doesn't fray around the edge. I've had lip balm holders that I've kept on a purse or on my key fob for months and months and months that I used this for and they never frayed and got ugly. But it is also nice and flexible and thin so it doesn't bulk up the project when you use it as a backing. So there's that. Snap. Snap case. Now let's do the eyelet version. I'm now going to be stitching out the eyelet version of the bat. This is a four by four friendly version, so I changed to a smaller hoop. The difference in the four by four version of the eyelet case is that it, it, the wings are slightly brought in. I did that just so that it could be accessible to those using a four by four machine. Hoop your stabilizer. In my opinion, tear away or cut away does not matter. And stitch the placement for your bat. I'm now going to take my fabric that I'm using. For this particular project, I am using blackboard fabric from Joanne. And I'm going to pin it to cover the placement in its entirety. And then I'm going to stitch the details of the bat. That's going to be um, his tummy and ears and wing detail, his nose, eyes, and fangs. All right, now the details of our bat are stitched. And now with the eyelet case, you have two choices. You have a choice to make in the way that you want to finish your case. And this goes the exact same way for every eyelet case that you make, for me at least, whether it's got a bat on the front or a happy face or a monogram or an applique or whatever it's got on the front of it. So your first option is to place a backing, just like we did with our snap case, um, to cover the back. You would seal that up with the next stitch and then do pocket placement lines. Then you would take a piece of pocket fabric, line it up with the placement lines, and build a pocket just like you did with the snap case. That is in the instructions with, with your hand sanitizer case design. Or you can do what I do, which is this. Here's the thing. With the eyelet case, you're not going to see the back of the snap strap like you did with the back. Watch this, right here. There is no piece like this on the eyelet case. So I don't want to bother with the backing piece, frankly. So here's what I do. I run this step for the backing, I mean for the outline. There's nothing on the back of my hoop right now. It's just the plain bat on stabilizing. So now you can see that I have the outline. It looks like it's finished from the front, but from the back, it's still got all that stuff on the back. So I'm going to take my second piece of chalkboard fabric or blackboard fabric, vinyl, whatever you're using, and I'm going to cover all of that so far and pin it in place. Do not use adhesive spray because you will adhesive spray that pocket closed. And so now the front looks like this and the back has my back fabric pinned. I'm going to skip the pocket placement lines because I'm not using a pocket, a quote pocket. I'm not using that straight edge pocket. Okay, now you can see that my project is finished. So I'm going to remove clips, pins, tape, anything that you use that you don't want in there anymore. I'm now going to trim around my project using the front as a guide. Now you can see probably more clearly what I was talking about with the pocket earlier. 
If you wanted to use a straight edge pocket for the eyelet version, you certainly could, but then you would have had the back exposed like this. So you would need to use a backing and then do the pocket placement and then put your straight edge pocket up there. I don't wanna go through all that trouble because guess what? For the eyelet case, once I poke a hole for the eyelet and install the eyelet through both of these uh, little tabs, no one is ever going to see inside this case. So I don't care if it doesn't have a backing. See, if it's hanging from your purse or key fob like this, no one's the wiser. So that's why I do it the easier way. I don't even use the pocket placements and I don't use the straight edge pocket like I did with the snap tab. Now you can see both of our cases trimmed and the hardware is installed. For the eyelet case, you poke a hole for your eyelet, install an eyelet in the front one and the back one separately if you choose to. For the snap tab case, you can easily just use a plain split ring key ring through the top and snap it closed. For the eyelet, I highly recommend these things that are called large lobster clasps. I've gotten them off Amazon. I've gotten them at other places online that sell findings and key, key chain hardware. So you can insert your sanitizer. Of course, you could use a split ring through there, but then every time you wanted to change the sanitizer, it would be kind of hard. So I use these so you can easily just go through the front and the back. Ta-da! And these are the exact same methods that you would use to stitch any of Designs by Little B hand sanitizer cases. So I hope that helped you create your ne next project. I will see you in the next video and I'll chat with you in the group.